I'm glad you showed up. Let's go ahead and get into our first lesson. This is super exciting. Now, this is probably going to feel like the most awkward part of all of these lessons is actually your stance. Now, let me ask you a question. What is your strong arm? What is your strong arm? The arm that you use the most or you feel is the strongest? Mine is my right arm. Now, whatever your strong arm is, that's the arm that you're actually going to put in the back of your body along with that same side leg. Now, let me explain. So, if I'm facing you forward here, feet shoulder width apart, arms just relax, what I'm going to do with my feet is I'm going to stagger them almost like they're facing the corner of the room. So, watch what I'm going to do with my right side, okay? Because this is my strong side. I'm going to put it in the back of my body. Now, notice what happened to my feet. It's almost like, once again, I'm facing the corner of the room, but my eyes stay on you guys as if you guys were my opponents. So, here's how the feet are going to line up in this position. Front toe is going to line up to your back heel. So, look at this straight line here. So, if I draw a line with my finger, that front foot is literally going to line up with my back heel. Okay? And that's pretty much how you're going to stand in your stance. Now, you might be asking why we put the strong hand in the back. Well, the reason why is because we generate a lot of power from the back of our stance. So we want to keep that strong arm back there. That way we can get more use out of it. Now, let me show you guys where you're going to put your hands. So I want you guys to, before we go into the hands, relax your legs. Make sure that your legs are nice and relaxed. A lot of times whenever I start teaching these stances, Everybody kind of just stiffens up because it feels new and awkward and different, and I get it. It's going to feel like that for a little bit, but I promise the more that we move through this and the more lessons that we do, the more it's going to feel natural to you, and that's really what we're working for. Now, what I want you guys to do is just put a slight bend in your knees. Now, I don't mean to squat. Don't squat down. Just relax them. Nice and easy, nice and relaxed, okay? So notice how I'm not really bending here. They're just kind of relaxed, not locked out, right? Now, here's what I'm going to do with my back foot. I'm going to get slightly on my toe, okay? So I'm not just flat-footed here. We want to be a little bit on our toe. That way, we're ready to move around. Now, I'll explain this a little bit more the deeper we get into this session. Now, going back into where we put our hands, our hands are going to go right where our temples are, actually. So temples, if you don't know what temples are, they're right here outside of your eyes. So that's where you really want to rest your fists and your elbows are going to rest to your side, protecting your rib cage, protecting as much of this center part of your body as you can. Elbows tight, fists closed, and hands are high next to those temples. Now, you might be noticing I'm closing my fists a certain way. Let me explain that to you. The way we close our fists are our thumbs close over the rest of our fingers here. Okay, make sure it's not tucked underneath. That's a no-no. We don't want to do that. That's how you break your thumb, okay? So on the outside of those fingers, squeeze them tight, as tight as you can, and once again, place them next to those temples. Now, another thing you might be noticing right now is that I have my chin down and shoulders tucked close to my ears. The reason why we do that is because we want pretty much a ball of energy here, a ball of just protection. Everything right here is our valuable stuff, okay? We don't want anything right here getting attacked, punched. We want to protect it as much as we can, right? So, elbows are high, protecting our side of our face as much as we can, our ears, okay, our temples. That's a major knockout point. Um, if you've ever sparred before, if you've ever done boxing before, you know that. You don't want to get hit on the side of your face. You also don't want to get hit on your chin. That's why we tuck our chin in. So, chin is tucked, elbows are close to our rib cage, as tight center to your body as you can. And I'm a stickler on this. Keep those hands up. Now, I know I can't watch you throughout our exercises or even throughout these lessons, but I really want to reiterate that, guys, really focus on getting that form down in your stance. That is so, so imperative to moving forward with the striking and the movement and the footwork. So make sure that you guys really do your best to do all of the intricacies as best as you can. Um, so that means keep your hands up, keep your elbows anchored, 
close those fists real tight, tuck that chin, bring those shoulders up, elbows tight, you're up on that back toe, knees are slightly bent. And this is our stance. Now, for those of you guys who are left-handed, let me go ahead and go into this. It's just gonna be the opposite side. So, we step back into that stance just like we did on our other side, my trunk side, right? So our feet are facing the corner of the room, slightly bent, up on that back toe, hands are high, fists are closed over those fingers, elbows as tight as you can, shoulders up, chin down, eyes looking forward. Toe lined up with that back heel. And those are our stances, guys. So whatever stance you're in, whether that's your left fighting stance like me, or your right fighting stance, those are your different stances. Now, you can work throughout these um, workouts, those, both of those stances. It doesn't really matter to me. If you wanna get good at both, that's always a great idea. That's always a great idea. But most of the time, you guys will see me in my strong stance, uh, depending on whether I switch or move around, etc. And we'll get more into that as we get into these lessons and workouts the more we get into this course. So I'm super excited, guys. Let's go ahead and keep on moving forward. So. There's a lot of things that go into this stance. We're gonna actually go into a little breakdown of movement now. Not only do I got, wanted to show you guys the stances, but I wanted to show you guys how to move in the stance. Um, this is gonna be a very quick overview. So let's go ahead and go into it. Now, let's get back into our stances. Let me see you guys with your feet slightly spread apart, uh, bigger than your shoulder width, toe to your heel, Hands are high, elbows anchored, fists closed, chin down, eyes up, hands touching those temples, and we're in our stance again. No matter what side you're in, okay? Find your stance. Here we go. Now, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of the movements that I'll be doing in this series. It's a forward movement, which is called a gauge, a backwards movement, which is called a gauge backwards, a sideways movement, which is just a side step, and a sideways movement, to the left as well, which is also called a sidestep. Um, we'll also be doing things called pivots, um, and these are intricacies that will go along with your punches, and also a different form of pivoting um, going into how we maneuver in our stance. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys is gauging forward and back. So we're in our stance. The way we gauge forward is pushing off our back toe. Now here comes that back toe that I was saying, you always want to kind of be on that foot, pushing forward. Now, one thing I really want to point out with this is that you don't want to ever bring your feet close together. That's a big no-no. We don't want to do that. Now, the reason why, if somebody were to punch me or if somebody were to push me over, I don't have a lot of um, grip here on the floor. I have a very small base, and it's way easier for me to fall over if I were to get striped or pushed, etc. So we want a really wide stance. The wider, the better. Now, no matter where we move, no matter how we punch, we never want to make this smaller. That's super important to point out. So, as I gauge forward, I want you guys to watch what happens. My feet actually get wider and then back to normal where they are right now. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna gauge forward towards you guys, just with my footwork, okay? We're not gonna be throwing any punches just yet. Just working on our stance right now. Hands are high, we're in our stance. Watch what happens. I push through my hips, through that foot, my back leg to gauge forward. Okay, momentum is coming from that back side. Okay, notice how I'm shifting my hips forward. Watch what happens when I step to this front. I push and I step. Okay, so this is what a lot of people call a step glide. A step glide. Okay, now breaking this step glide down, it's really just a step step. So let's take it even slower. Let's break it down even more. Back to our stance. Let's reset. Get those hands up for me. Pushing off that back side. Watch what happens. Push so that I can get that front leg forward and then the back leg follows with another baby step. Okay, let's reset again. Shake it out, shake it out. Reset. Hands high. I push off my back leg to get momentum forward and I step, step. And again, I push and I step, step. And again, and I step, step, push, and I step, step forward. Okay, let's try this 10 times moving forward. Hands high, stay sharp. 
are, keep those elbows anchored. That's something I always catch you guys on. Keep those hands up, keep those elbows anchored. Fists closed tight, okay? So, on that back toe, we're gonna push off. Let's just take it nice and easy. We're gonna keep this groping down for now, for the first 10 reps. Here we go. We're gonna push off that back leg. One, okay, reset. Two, reset. Three, reset. Four, reset. Five, reset. Step, step. That's six. Step, step. That's seven. Step with the front leg. Step, step. That's eight. Push off the back. Step with the front. Step, step. Nine. One more. Step, step. Now, you guys may be noticing that I'm also stepping backwards. That's actually just your backwards gauge. Exactly what I was showing you guys there towards the end of those reps is that backward step. Now, let's go ahead and go over that. Um, backward stepping, we're actually gonna push off our front foot now. So it's the exact same thing. So if I were to gauge forward, broken down, step, step, I'm also gonna gauge back the same way. Here's a really quick tip. Anytime you're moving forward, back, side to side, you're always going to move with the leg that is closest to the direction that you're headed. So, quick question. If I'm moving forward in my stance, which is my left foot forward, which foot am I going to move first? My left. Now, if I'm going backwards in my stance, which foot am I going to move first? My back leg, my right leg, right? If I'm moving sideways, can you guess? This way. If I'm moving this way, can you guess? This way first, okay? So that's a really quick breakdown of all those movements. Now let's do it together. Let's go back into that forward and backwards, still breaking it down, okay? So we just gauged forward 10 times, right? Let's do this also with the backwards. If you guys weren't already doing that backwards with me from just watching me, now we're gonna do it together. So let's gauge forward, pushing off that back leg. Step, step. Step with the back leg first, push off the front. Step, step. That's your gauge back. Gauge forward, step, step. Gauge back, step, step. Front foot, back foot. Notice how my stance does not get smaller. If anything, it gets wider. Okay, number four, step, step. Step, step. Step, step. Step, 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 give me three more, step, 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 two more, step, step, bring it back, one more forward, step to the front, then the back, back to the front. Okay, so that's our forward and backwards gauge broken down. Let's see if we can do this all together. Now, you guys heard me talking in the very beginning where I was talking about a step glide. That's really what we really want to make this into. Okay, so this step glide is how we're really gonna push off and get away or gauge into somebody, right? In our stand up boxing stance. We wanna hunker down, we wanna stay low. We wanna push off those hips to really get some distance forward. Step glide, I'm staying low to the ground. Notice how I'm not hopping. So notice how I didn't come up with my body. I glided, okay? I glided forward. Now. This is exactly what we broke down this gauge into, that step step, okay? All we're doing is we're doing it together and faster, okay? Putting those two steps together and faster, keeping that back foot when you step it in super close to the floor, okay? So we're gonna gauge forward. And then we're gonna gauge backwards. Now, once again, pushing off your front leg, stepping with the back, okay? Step five, step five, step five. Step left. And those are your forward and back gauges. Now let's try this 10 times. Everything put together, no more breaking it down. We're gonna try to put this together now. Now, if you don't quite get it yet, don't worry about it. You can always do this lesson again, or we're gonna also incorporate this in our workouts and more lessons to come. So don't worry about it. Take your time, practice, rewind this video if you'd like to. Take your time, let's really learn this, okay? So let's go into this forward and back gauge. So hands high, pushing forward. Once again, staying low to the ground. It's just that step, step. We're just speeding it up and we're gliding now. Step, step faster, that's all it is. So pushing off, getting momentum from those hips, from the back leg, gauge 
gauge up. One, gauge back. One. Okay, we're gonna go to ten. Here we go. Gauge up, gauge back. Two, gauge up, gauge back. Three, up, back. Four, up, back. Five, up, back. Six, up, back. Seven, up, back. Eight, up, back. Nine, up, back, and ten. Awesome, guys. I hope you guys are getting that on your end. Once again, if not, take your time. Pause this video. Try it again. Really watch how my legs are moving. Really take the time to learn this. Okay, last thing that I'm going to teach you in this first lesson on your footwork and your stance is a side step. And it's even easier than that step forward, step back gauge. So, all it is, this is actually just a step step. So, nothing, nothing gliding or moving fast, particularly just in the air with this movement. It's just a side step. So, let's say we're moving to our right or your right, okay? So, that means you're gonna take your right leg and step with it first. Now, remember, quick tip, whichever direction you're heading, that same side leg that's closest to that direction, that's the leg that you're gonna move. So, our hands are up. I'm gonna step, step to my right. Which foot am I gonna move first? My right leg. Step, step. Notice how my feet didn't end up lining up here. That's also really important. Make sure you guys keep that toe to heel rule in play, okay? That's where a lot of people start losing their balance or they, you know, they're trying to figure out why they're stumbling. It's because their feet start lining up too much here, okay? You wanna keep the spread, shoulder width, double shoulder width would be even better. Shoulder width apart is great as well. But once again, wider the better, okay? So to the right again, we're gonna go step, step. Let's go ahead and add the left in here. I would even go to the left in a side step. How do you think I'm gonna move? Left foot first, okay? So no matter where your left foot is, whether that's in the back or whether that's in the front, let's move our left side. So we're gonna go towards the left. Left foot first to the side. Step, step. To the right. Step, step. Just like a dance. Step, step. Step, step. Okay, we're gonna do this 10 times. Now if you feel, like I said, I kind of referenced dancing. Um, if you're a good dancer, you're going to pick up on this fantastic. They say a good dancer also knows how to fight or a good fighter also knows how to dance. Um, so I, I find that that's very true. You have to have rhythm. You have to have um, footwork. You have to know how to move. So that's what we're learning how to do. And if you're not a dancer, don't worry. I'm not either. <laughs> but um, it's definitely something that you can really reference when going into footwork and things like that as far as your stand-up boxing striking is going. So let's do this together 10 times. We're gonna go to the right first. Wherever your right leg is, whether that's on the front side or back side, let's step to the right first. Side step, hands high. One, notice how I stay up on that toe, guys. I stay up on the toe, my feet are not flat, my legs are not locked, slightly bent, hunger down, okay? To the left, that's one. That's two, move with me. That's three. That's four. That's five, keep it up. That's six. That's seven, find your stance. That's eight. That's nine, one more. That's 10, go ahead and shake it out, shake it out. Get those legs all relaxed again, arms all relaxed again. All right. So, I went over all your basic movement and your stance. I am gonna go over one more quick thing. I know I said that one was the last thing, but I do have one more quick thing to throw in there. Okay, so our very last thing, we won't be doing a lot of this in um, this course, but it's actually called pivoting. So, pivoting in your stance, not your feet, but in your stance, it's really important because with the feet, pivoting with your feet is gonna come a little bit later when we start going over punches. But pivoting in your stance means making right angle turns, 180 turns, or even just 90 degree turns, okay? So you really wanna get as much movement out of the way as you can. And these are what you call maneuvers, okay? These are what you call maneuvers. This is going into um, even a little bit of evasions. If you don't know what evasions are, that's getting out of the direction or line of a strike or a punch, okay? So I'm just gonna show you guys the basic 90 degree turn or pivot in your stance. 
we're going to go pivoting forward and we're also going to go pivoting back. So whatever you guys' stance is, find that stance again. Let's go ahead and get to it. We're almost done here. Let's get through this lesson. So final thing, pivoting in your stance, whatever stance you're in, find it. Here we go. Three, two, one, let's do it. So hands high, elbows anchored, chin down, shoulders up, toe in that backside, and knees slightly bent. Here we go. I'm gonna show you guys my backwards pivot first. So meaning I'm actually gonna step behind me, behind me. So not a gauge back, but behind me. Once again, I kind of referenced um, angles here. Um, this is what you call a 90 degree turn. Okay, 90 degrees. So I was once facing this way, then I'm going to be facing this way. If you want to take it in terms of the clock, which is how I learned, um, the direction that you're facing is 12. The direction over here to your right side is 3. Behind you is 6 o'clock. And back this way to your left is 9 o'clock. Okay, so in my instance, in my stance, I am going to pivot um, backwards and I'm going to end up facing 3 o'clock. Now, if you're in the opposite stance, you're going to end up facing nine o'clock. Okay, so that's really important to point out. And I'll kind of go over um, that opposite stance too if you happen to be left handed. So I will go over that. Here we go. So, pivoting backwards, um, we're going to end up once again, you're at 12 right now, we're going to end up facing three. So, we're going to make that direct right turn. It's a sharp turn. We pivot our hips and we just step right back into our stance facing three o'clock. Here we go. Hands high. Step back, turn the hips. Now, I'm going to show you guys a pivot forward, okay? Pivoting forward. It's the exact same thing. I'm just going to face you guys again. So, if I'm at 3, I'm going to go to you guys at my 12 o'clock, facing forward. That's really all a pivot is. That's really all a pivot is. Now, let's go into that other stance really quick. So, if you guys are left-handed, this is for you. So, if I were to pivot backwards and this is a clock where you're facing where you're facing me right now is 12 where to your right is three behind you is six and to your left is nine where do you think i'm gonna turn nine o'clock okay so we're gonna go to nine o'clock so in my stance i would go into three in you guys stance you're going to nine so our hands are up on that back toe we're gonna pivot backwards behind us so that we can face nine o'clock. Pivot. Okay, find that stance again. Now, if it's not directly in your stance, that's okay, guys. Kind of shake it off. Find your stance again. Line those toes uh, to heel back up, and then we're going to go back forward facing 12 o'clock again, which is, for me, you guys. So, I pivot forward again. So, let me get back in my strong stance. Let's go ahead and go over that backwards and forwards pivot 10 times, no matter what stance you're in. And once again, keep your stance. That's so important. Keep your stance. Um, make sure you're going toe to heel. Make sure your that foot is on that back, uh, uh, back foot is on that toe. Um, knees are slightly bent, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pivot forward, also backwards. Let's start backwards. So 10 times after this, the first lesson is done. You made it, you survived. Here we go. So, pushing backwards, step back, pivot your body, face three. Or in your case, if you're left, stand, uh, left fighting stance, then, uh, I'm sorry, right fighting stance. That means your right side is in the front, uh, which means you're left handed. Um, that means you're going to face nine. Here we go. So, backwards, forward pivot. One, backwards, four, two. Three, find your stance. Four, five, six, seven. That's eight. That's nine. That is ten. And that is how we pivot in our stance. All right, guys. So we today we broke down your fighting stance. Now, once again. Left fighting stance, that's my fighting stance. That means my right hand is in the back, my left side is in the front. If you guys are left-handed, that means your right fighting stance is your stance. That means your left hand is in the back. Okay, quick recaps. We worked gauging forward and back. We worked sidestepping. And we worked pivoting backwards 
and forwards. So those are the basic maneuvers in your stance, guys. So I'm super excited to record. I hope you guys enjoyed this first lesson and you got some value from it and that you learned a little bit. Now, if you guys don't have it right away, that's okay. If this is your first time doing any kind of martial arts or any kind of boxing, striking, anything like that, um, it's gonna feel awkward. That's normal, it's okay. Um, work through it, keep practicing. Even after this, keep practicing. If you wanna rewind this video, rewind it. Take your time, really absorb these things. Once again, work on those intricacies. Keep your hands up, okay? Elbows anchored, knees bent, okay? Hands are high next to the temple. Chin down, shoulders high. On that back toe, toe, front toe, to heel. Okay, so there's a lot of things I know. There's a lot of really specific things that go into a stance, but I promise the more you guys do this, the more muscle memory will come to play and you guys are gonna get it down. I cannot wait for you guys to do the next lesson. We're actually gonna be going over our first punch. See you there in the next fighter session.